Hi, today we continue our excursion into Russian foodstuffs and this time with dairy products. The most obvious of them all is milk, which is basically the same which you have in your respective countries. And uh, I will just draw your attention to the design of the package, which is very traditional and is uh, borrowed from a Soviet era. A lot of uh, foodstuffs now appeal to the original package designs which uh, we had in uh, Soviet Union so they can draw their marketing efforts and campaigns on the existing patterns which are widely recognized across ex-Soviet Union. So milk is the same, it's just the fat content is different uh, and there's nothing special about it. But we have a very special milk uh, or it seems to me that it is special, which is called Taplione Mlako or baked milk uh, as, it, as Wikipedia uh, names it. Uh, it has light brown color and it tastes very different from the regular milk and it here we my family actually calls it Mazajske due to its uh, origin at a uh, small town in Moscow region. It tastes uh, somewhat different and um, with uh, caramel uh, notes and as a kid I really really enjoyed it. Uh, aside from milk per se, we also have other products uh, which stem from milk. Uh, well, the logical continuation of uh, the baked milk is this product called Tryazhenka. Uh, and actually, for males in my country, it's really hard to make uh, a distinction between multiple milk products like this, Tryazhenka and Prostakvasha. Uh, but thanks uh, to this video, I finally figured it out for myself. So, Ryazhenka, which is actually translated as uh, well, baked milk, milk too, but uh, it is also, or it's a variety of boiled milk, and it was, it has been produced by leaving a a uh, jug of boiled milk in an oven for a day or, or for a night until it is coated with brown crust. So yeah, that's that's it. That's, so let us see how it looks like. It's also browning a bit, but it's more more thick, more condensed, rather than the milk type I showed you before, and it's. Um, and it's somewhat m m more sour and uh, Wikipedia says that it can be stored safely at room temperature for up to 40 hours because it's free of bacteria and enzymes. Well, you can try it, it's very traditional, called Ryazhenka and all the products which I mentioned here, they are very good for your health. <laughs> Another branch of uh, dairy products uh, is uh, kefir and uh, sour uh, dairy products. Kefir is this, and uh, it's uh, it is a fermented uh, milk drink made with kefir grains, which we actually call uh, kefir mushrooms or fungi, and. Uh, it has, of course, different fat value too, and it's it's sour and uh, white and also healthy. Uh, it has a very rich history. It was uh, developed in uh, Caucasus Mountains and. Uh, Oh, it smells really tasty, um, and it was a highly guarded secret. It's a production. What? Well, what? Finally, Russians 
managed to get themselves the recipe. And uh, now I, I even saw it, uh, it on sale even in Sweden, uh, although of quite different uh, taste. But it's still written and translated as kefir. Um, also we have a number of products which are also kind of a yogurt drink, like this, Iran. And they have origin also in Caucasus region, in uh, uh, Central Asia, from the nomadic peoples of Steppe. And, and uh, not only Iran, it's uh, also Tan and Kumis. Uh, Kumis is actually Mary's milk. Uh, fermented but I didn't buy it because it's not that that traditional in my society but sometimes people do drink this also of different fat value and uh, it could be could contain some uh, could be in the shape of pop drink and uh, can could have a deal and uh, maybe some fragments of pickled uh, cucumbers so it's also white and very refreshing, always served cool. Uh, another one is Wikipedia, uh, help me. It is called sourd milk uh, in Russian prastakvasha. And uh, I really didn't know what it is, but it's uh, like always, uh, always prominently featured uh, in all. Uh, convenience stores, so I finally tried it. I, I used to eat slash drink it when I was a kid and I remember I didn't like it and it's it's like yogurt or kefir and but it's in the shape of drink but it could be I think as a used as a side dish <laughs> doesn't want to go out yeah it, it comes out in clumps and it's sour yeah, it's sometimes condensed. Okay, before before I make a fiasco, I stop. So it's like there are some bits of it. Prostakvasha, also for the concerts of healthy eating and healthy living. Uh, then we have uh, smetana which is, uh, well, according to Wikipedia, in English you have it as a loan word, smetana, again, the, the package design developed in Soviet Union, um, and actually the, this is very popular logo, at least in, it was in Moscow, of um, Moscow Astankino uh, diary, diary farm. So it is a dairy product which is produced by souring heavy cream and it is always, it's very thick but it's just because it's 30% uh, fat uh, but there are lighter versions but it's like the best one or the richest or the fattest one is the one in which the spoon stands and this is the one and people normally prefer that type of or at least prefer it, uh, our ancestors preferred that type of smetana. Here it is really, really uh, thick, and uh, you always add it to your borscht soup, and uh, you eat uh, pelmenis or dumplings with it. So it, it's not salty. It's, um, well, you should try it. <laughs> I personally like it more uh, than mayonnaise.